recording. I think the the circuitry for sound for audio and the GoPro is much better than I'm gonna have to stop for gas. It's much better than um, what was there for the uh, for the POV, the VIO. And I have my helmet pulled back. I can actually see the very top of the uh, GoPro unit. I mean, it's a terrific position. Here's my problem is that, um, and I can do something about that actually. I might actually lower down this extension. Um, but even with that, uh, it's going to be close. You're going to see a big part of the instrument panel. I'm wondering if you're going to see or if I'm going to see when I look at this later, much of anything else. Natural tendency is for my head to go down a little bit, not up. So I might actually take the time. Yeah, I might do that now. To actually uh, remove that. Let's see what it does for uh, for everything. So let's shut. This is pretty much a test of the GoPro 3 chin mounted. And um, I'm going to see if I can get the tools and remove this. So in the meantime, I'm not going to use a uh, remote. By the way, this is, uh, I had a flat on my uh, fat bike. This is what a tube from a fat bike looks like. And I had it repaired. God, this may take forever. Well, I removed the top portion of the bagger shield, so it is a little bit lower. I don't think so. I think, yeah, I'll put it back so it looks all nice, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so it should be running again. Here's the real test with those extremely loud Vance and Hines. This is a 2012 Acaro. Trying a GoPro 3, which is mounted just underneath the on the chin of the uh, of this helmet. And uh, it's one of those helmets that the whole front comes up and off, but it did manage to attach it pretty well. Let's see, I had no luck with the remote mic, which I have next inside the helmet, right next to my left side of my face, pressing up against it. The same uh, remote had absolutely, it's absolutely horrible with the uh, VIO POV unit I have. Um, where am I here? So, I'm not sure. This is a whole test we got going. Got extra batteries. I got another 32 gigabyte SD card. We got to get gas first. And she's a working. And I removed the top half of this. That's why there's holes in it of this, uh, I got a fuel problem. I just have to get fuel. Remove the top half of the um, the mini windscreen, and uh, the way it's set up, I have my Easy Pass here, so I didn't want to just put it further down and reattach it. So I got everything in one of the part saddlebags here. Let's see if the fuel. See if I can go three miles to my usual station, and let's see if this thing works. This is a test of the GoPro 3 Plus chin mount, keeping my head up. This actually might work. I can see the top of the uh, see the top of the GoPro 3. I use some electrical tape because uh, that J clamp or whatever it's called. And that's all I'm using with uh, one of those stick-on. Uh, clamps, uh, I guess you could call it. I don't know if it's a J clamp or the uh, 
But whatever the J clamp is supposed to attach to, I got uh, some electrical tape to make sure it's that J, the J clamp or that J unit is uh, in is mounted correctly. So I use uh, the same unit on my bicycles, the GoPro 3, but chest mounted, which I really like. So I'm used to it, used to using it without the remote control. So. I mean, I think this is actually going to work because uh, the visual is going to work. With a chest mount, I tried it on a Sportster, it worked really well as long as there was no windshield. It was actually a great viewpoint and it was much better than a POV with uh, the external microphone, with the uh, built-in microphone, uh, how it handled loud exhausts. Um, they're all bad when you try to scream out over the loud exhausts and they're on the outside, the mics that is. but. Uh, I just got to remember to kind of keep my head up. And believe it or not, this is like right outside the house here. And it's uh, 10.30 in the morning, not quite, on a Saturday. And yesterday I went out for a ride to test the POV and the external microphone, the lapel mic. And I had traffic like this basically for an hour. Uh, as I went up Route 80, right from here to Route 80 was, uh, I just turned around and came back, I got frustrated, it was just stop and go, but what I was saying on uh, yesterday's clip, which probably won't be used because you can't hear my voice, it was horrible, I think it's time to retire unless I just want to do the visuals, the uh, POV, the two-piece uh, helmet cam or uh, put the camera wherever you want to thick cable leading to a recording unit that has an LCD I could see that would be excellent if you could put that on the dashboard you know one at a different point of view I could use that on the bike actually in addition to this GoPro I'm really hoping the audio works out uh, that would be nice I could do some more motor vlogs I've done a lot of uh, video recordings going back to before 2010 some cross-country and back trips ocean to ocean uh, but they were all on these POV units which uh, you know they really things have really improved not just going from like 480p to 1080p and now 4k in terms of the picture quality um, although the, the one I have now is a 1080p which has equally and sometimes better than the uh, GoPro 3 Plus in terms of picture quality and sharpness. It's a little bit, actually it's a little bit more advanced in some ways, but it's just older technology and how bulky it is. But it's, I guess it's meant for a certain reason. Quite a few of them were used on action type events. But anyway, I digress as usual. Um, I'm, this is really a test. It's a, it's a video test, <clears throat> excuse me, to see how the chin mount works. Surprisingly simple <clears throat> installation, but I'm not sure really with my height that I already had to take off part of the, I got to see how that works too, the, the top part of this uh, short windshield, which is a clear part, looks a little odd with the holes, it's saying I have fuel issues, probably do. But I'm not going more than uh, three miles. I'm just hoping there's enough in there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be using a power commander on this, which hopefully will change the quality of the uh, exhaust. Maybe do something with the fuel mileage, but as you might be able to tell, this thing is super loud. And I just hope my. Uh, I hope the, the filtering inside the GoPro is better than that inside the uh, POV uh, high-definition camera, which was really terrible. So let's see what happens with this mic, see if the connections stay on. They're partly held with electrical tape, but there is a part of them that's swinging free to allow my the front of the helmet to go up and down. And, um, I'm just very interested to see, I like to go for a ride too, today's a really nice day, um, may stop and get a coffee, I'm not sure, 
definitely have to stop for gas or we'll stop and have to walk for gas. Uh, but that's right up the uh, right up the highway here. Very close by. So that traffic ate up a lot of gas. I mean I think it I think also when this thing screams fuel there's usually a gallon left. How loud that is, and this is really a good test to see if uh, if the voice can be heard or if there's distortion. And uh, now that I found if the mounting point is good, which I think it is pretty good, I probably slumped down and you wouldn't see anything but the easy pass and this uh, fuel blinking on and off. But I think it is a pretty good mount, probably a little bit better than the helmet mount, it doesn't stick up there in the wind. He sees me coming and he goes right out in front of me. That's okay. here and get gas. I made it. Been here a lot before. Alright. Okay, so that was, um, took four gallons when it was telling me it was basically empty. Well, the fuel warning went on, so it's got more than a gallon reserve. It's not the first time I've seen that. I'm going to get on reserve. Let's see. It's on. Keep my head up. Yep. Fine, because I'm an accessory. Now it's telling me I have a range of 192 miles. Camera's on. Things are like ballistic missiles taken off. Vanson Hines dual slash cut mufflers. I'm trying to speak in kind of a normal voice here. I'm not really not sure that's going to work. I really didn't check to see if the microphone was still in place. Uh, the uh, it's still connected. Okay, this is a. Uh, it's an interesting place. Interesting set of highways and byways in uh, about an area of the northeast here in New Jersey. I mean, just the design. You know, routes linger from when there were far fewer cars going much slower. And while a lot of things have changed, like a lot of the circles or roundabouts, not all of them, but a lot of them have been eliminated. Uh, some of those still exist. And merges like that with two major highways. I don't know how you get away with it, but there's ones that are even worse. Just very crowded and uh, roads and routes existing from a time when, you know, basically had, uh, you know, 1920s, like, Model A's running around. So let's let's see if uh, this makes a, a darn bit of difference. In um, anything. Now, what's interesting is uh, in the audio quality, anyway. And I notice I'm already starting to slump. So maybe this is good in a way. It'll teach me to better posture. It's a little hard to do that after. Uh, reaching old age here, but this should be fine actually. Much lower windshield, I do notice a lot more, you know, that little extension, it's like a three or four inch extension on the top of, uh, this is much closer to the original equipment, shorty uh, windscreen 
on the Vaqueros. It looks really neat, but uh, there's a lot of wind. If it was, it's, it's, it's nice out right now. It's going to get hot later, which will make this nicer. But uh, there's, I can tell there's going to be a lot more turbulence. So the video may be shaking a little bit more than it would have. The only thing I could do is go back to what was on the bike previously, and that was a, uh, like a, I don't know, maybe an 8-inch all-clear uh, piece of plexiglass windscreen. I don't think it looks very good, but it is, um, for the winter time, it might be the right answer. Um, so, there's a difference, but it's actually... Let's see, I'm going right around uh, 60 miles an hour, a little bit less probably. Um, following the traffic here, and it's really not bad. But what happens when there's crosswinds, big headwind, and there is, it actually is windy outside, or appears to be. Yep, it sure is, but the wind is coming from behind me. That could create turbulence too. But uh, it's not really too, too bad. Uh, the chin mount, I think, is a good one. I could very easy to reach the controls. I uh, use the same GoPro unit in a chest mount. I think I said this about five times already. On uh, bicycle rides, mountain bike rides, mostly. Or, and um, let's see what I'm going to do here. Should I try Route 80? Or, yesterday, this was the same route I came and I was already stuck in traffic. Well, no, I was, I was actually on Route 80 yesterday, not Route 46. What I think I might do is just stay on Route 46 for a little while and then head up 15. Really pretty ride. I got a 32 gig card inside and um, really excited to have this, the audio portion of this work. Plus, it's, it's just the GoPro and this is only a 3 plus, it's just, I am going to get a, a couple more mounts. Because um, there is another uh, helmet mount that would lift the GoPro up. And you, you know, right now though it's in an excellent place as far as not obstructing uh, vision except when I look extremely down. I just got to remember to keep my, kind of my helmet as back, far back as I can. And uh, the full face is much better than the open face I, I used yesterday as far as uh, <clears throat> keeping the noise out. It's going to be easy to check in the mirrors to see if it's working. <clears throat> Pardon the voice. Seems like I have a kind of a permanent semi-laryngitis condition. Um, this is Route 46. And in a place uh, called Wayne. Joyce and man the, the amount of wind noise is uh, wow it, it kind of rivals uh, the Vance and Hines roar just with that top half off the uh, of the screen it's very interesting I think the guy in front of me is basically the fellow that uh, I'm not sure but appears to be the, the uh, fellow that just got the um, Just got the gas. Nice victory motorcycle. That looks great. This is a Kawasaki. I've had mostly Harley Davidsons. Many of them. Too many of them. Not because I thought they were bad, but simply too many. Too many of them. And uh, this compares favorably in most ways and better in some to uh, even the touring bikes I've had. This is kind of a uh, competitor to uh, the road glide, actually more than the street glide. It's got a frame mounted fairing like the road glide does. It has a, a more muscular look, a different look than the, than the road glide. Now, I haven't ridden uh, the latest version of the road glide, but I had the previous version before they went out of production for a year or two years, whatever it was, and I had a really fancy uh, one. My problem with that bike was it was it was heavy like this bike was, maybe even a little bit heavier because it was really dressed up. Uh, 
Uh, did I have a tour pack? I think I might have had a tour pack on that one. I think I had the whole enchilada. It was uh, basically an ultra, a road glide ultra. So um, could have gone cross country with it. Did not. It ran hot, and I mean, it ran so hot it would burn my right thigh and calf. That's how hot it ran. Despite the, the you know the staggered uh, the rear cylinder shutting off slowed down. That thing was hot. That's the reason that I finally let it go. It was absolutely beautiful bike. Gorgeous red color. But um, I went from that to uh, Sportster. I a Sportster for about a year. And uh, for the most part, I really liked the Sportster. Very maneuverable. I was pretty comfortable the one I had, to tell you the truth. <coughs> However, uh, it really, at high speeds, was not a great bike, simply because of the sound, the vibration, not the vibration, but the ride quality wasn't there at high speeds, not like something like this or the road glide. So I'll probably switch again at some point, it's just me. But, um, so this compares really favorably. <coughs> Um, mostly on a par in terms of handling with the, uh, with the Harley Touring bikes. Um, pretty good amount of lean angle it has for a bike. It's basically a slammed type of bike, a bagger, a cruiser. It's not a gold wing, even though that's considered a cruiser by many. Um, it's not a sports touring bike, but it can be a touring bike. You know, if I put the, the other part of the shield back up again, uh, make it a little bit taller. Now we're going 50 and there's really very gentle wind on me. I think it might be being helped by a strong wind from the back. I'm not sure. I don't feel much of anything. But I think at 80, this is going to be a handful in terms of turbulence with this shortened down uh, windscreen. But it has cruise control. It has generous floorboards. It handles well at higher speeds, very stable. It's a little bit clunky to me because it's got 16 inch wheels about I think 130 or 140 millimeter wide. So it appears to be a little bit clunky at very, I mean just maneuvering it around in the garage or very slow speeds. I, I find it a little bit clunky compared to other bikes I've had, but otherwise it's fine. It has basically everything you need except something which is the equivalent of a tour pack. In other words, a rear trunk. So, you know, if you're out on the road for uh, two, three weeks, going long distances uh, every day, um, everything but that is what it has. It has a radio. I wish it had Bluetooth. Uh, but I think it can even do Sirius XM. It does not have a CD player, but it has um, down here connections for iPods, so you can have audio books, music, whatever. It has a little bit better display of some information than any bike I've had, and that is that center LCD right down there with the gear indicator, the press it, depending on how you press these buttons here two trip meters plus the uh, regular odometer. This bike has about 62, almost 6,200 miles, not quite, on it. It's a 2012. Uh, time of day, you know, fuel remaining. Right now it says 282 miles. As I go along in fourth gear, it's a six gear, two overdrives. I just saw an old, old, old mobile from the 1960s pass by on the left. Kind of a tan colored car, maybe I might catch up with it. Bringing me to this because this has uh, styling cues from the 1960s and the instruments in the uh, bulging uh, hood like fairing. Uh, and I'm wrong, it's a Pontiac. Oh my god, that's old. And in fact, it's a Tempest, it's not even a full. So that was the compact car, 
the Tempest was a compact car, and this look, looks like it's from the 19, I don't know, 1970s, early 19, uh, I mean, late 60s, four-door Tempest. The Tempest was the compact car in the Pontiac range, and this became the GTO. And in fact, I'm looking at the instrument panel inside. It looks like a uh, GTO from 67. So I think this is a later model than that, but I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. It might be a 65. Much bigger than I remember them. So this is exciting sitting here. I was just over to that building. If you can see the red awnings, probably can't with the wide view of the camera. Just there yesterday, I had a flat on my fat bike. Very unusual. Thorn actually penetrated all that rubber and burst the uh, burst my bubble one day by flattening the tire, the tube inside. And this is a good test to see if you can hear me or if it's completely distorted. I don't have much trust right now after all these uh, with these Vance and Hines and now with the wind noise that I'm going to get good quality at all. But I might, I might just be talking to myself like I was yesterday. That was disappointing. Yeah, I put the, uh, this has one of those uh, sunglasses inside. I just got to remember to keep my head up a little bit. This is a 200 mile range on it. So this does have a gear indicator. Right now I'm in the highest overdrive, sixth gear. Um, it's only pulling 2,000 revs at around 60. Uh, it's a big bruiser cruiser, it really is. 104 cubic inches. Power way down low from 1,500 up. I don't know what horsepower it has. With the Vance and Hines, and I'm going to be doing the Power Commander deal next week or having it done on a dyno, dyno tune the bike so I won't get the acceleration popping, which I think depending on temperature, I'm not sure what, but it can go from uh, loud to wild deceleration popping. Like, uh, you know, somebody has a shotgun and it's repeating action just setting it off. It is, uh, you can hear part of it now and I'm doing doing mild. I'm in fifth gear, lugging it along. And I, I even the the, uh, the sound quite sounds, uh, this is actually a great sounding bike with its stock exhaust. I bought the bike used. That had been up to me. In fact, I looked to see if uh, a local dealer had um, stock exhaust. I trade the Vance and Hines and you might think that's crazy, but this thing has a great exhaust note with its standard mufflers. And for long trips, you really don't want it loud. I mean, I don't know about other people, but I've been on a lot of very long trips, and one of the things that can really get you tired, as much as seating position or the seat or where your feet are positioned, but really tired is wind noise and the loud exhaust. I mean, hour after hour.